Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. My name is Heather, I am a styling, skincare, hair care, self care enthusiast. I don't have any training in anything, I just have people ask me questions sometimes about stuff, so I decided to start a YouTube channel to share my thoughts. So you may be wondering why I don't have any makeup on and my hair is kind of, you know, half wet, half dry, all over the place. Um, there's, I, I'll, I'll let you know what that reasoning is um, as we get a little further in the video here. So um, this is a sort of a, gonna be sort of a stream of consciousness video, so I'm not reviewing anything. Um, if that's not your cup of tea, I totally understand. You can, you know, feel free to skip this one. Uh, but basically, um, as the title of the video says, I discovered very recently that uh, I am not fashionable in Miami. Um, so basically, uh, my job asked if uh, people on my team wanted to go to this event um, in Miami. Um, it was basically going to be a whole bunch of sales people getting together and talking about sales stuff. So um, I'm not a salesperson, but I get client. I work with clients after they go through the sales process. So they thought it might be good for some of us to go down there because um, I live in the Northeast, right? So uh, I'm not a huge fan of Florida. This is just my, my personal opinion. Please don't come for me. Um, the weather alone is, is reason enough for me to, to not love Florida. I don't do well in the heat at all, and that state just keeps sucking me back in. Um, this was the second time I've been to Florida this year, uh, this calendar year, and I there's a possibility I'll be there a third time this year, so we'll see if that happens. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so, you know, I packed, um, you know, I like packing, right? I have a couple packing videos. And so I packed like my new dress that I got in Italy. That's like a green paisley pattern. I could wear it with my waist cinching belt that I wear all the time. Then I brought my anthropology um, dress. It has kind of like psychedelic colors on it and like it has like permanent pleats in it basically. And I can wear that with the same belt. And, you know, I wore down a pair of black dress pants and, um, uh, a green flower top and like a you know gray cardigan and so you know I'm not I'm not stepping out of the pages of Vogue or anything but like you know you watch TV you see you see people in in different settings of offices and like okay maybe I'm not working for a fashion magazine considering what I was wearing but you know it doesn't look like I I, I don't fit into an office with the things that I was wearing right um, so I you know um, I, I thought I was very appropriate for the event and it's not that I wasn't appropriate that's not that's not the problem. Um, so there were, you know, two different sort of looks that I saw on, on the women and well, a lot of the women that I would presume to be from Miami that were at this event. Cause uh, like the company's based in Miami. So there's a lot of people that were going to be from Miami. Like that's why the event was there to begin with. Um, because that's where, you know, the company is based. So, um, this is not a judgment really of anybody. Um, it was just, it's just sort of an observation. Right. Um, and also like wear whatever the heck you want when you're, you know, when you're out living your life, when you're at the club, when you're, you know, at the mall, as long as your kibbles and bits are covered, like honestly do whatever you want, express yourself, all power to you there. So, um, um, so yes, yeah, so the, the dress code for this event is, is business casual, right? And so there is, we could kind of go down this path of um, there's sort of a, 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 a hierarchy here in, in dress codes, right? So what if somebody needs to go to a function that like, you know, they can't afford business attire or they can't afford black tie attire or, you know, it's a requirement for their job and they have to, you know, purchase certain clothes and wear them over and over again for their position because they can't afford to, to get a new, a new, whatever. Um, I totally understand that that's a thing that, that, you know, people have to go through. Um, and it's a difficulty sometimes to, to find work clothes that fit. Um, I think a lot uh, of these people that were, were at this event, um, especially the people and the women I'm going to be describing were, you know, sort of right out of college. Um, sales sort of tends to attract a very specific type of person. Um, the company also talked about how like it's made millionaires out of people. So this, they could be in like the millionaire group. I don't know. I don't know because I'm not in sales and you know, that's not, I don't know how hungry you have to be to like be a millionaire in sales at this company at 22 years old. I don't, I don't know how that works. So, okay, cool. I can't, I can't make any assumptions about how much money these people do or do not have. So there were two specific looks that I saw down there on the, on the women at the conference that I would assume these women were from Miami, um, which again, that assumption could be wrong. So look number one, um, I would just call basically inappropriate. So um, again, there's like a classist thing to dress codes, right? Um, but you know, you don't have to, you don't have to go crazy for business casual. And this was like a four day event. Um, honestly, if you played your cards right, you could probably get away with wearing like the same black dress all four days and nobody would care, right? So you don't have to go spend a gazillion dollars. Um, but you know, I'm sure that, that the women that wore skirts where you could basically like 
see the edge of their underwear because the slit was that high, I am sure they had something else that they could have worn that, that would, like jeans would have been better than that. Um, in some cases, even leggings would be better than that. Like that's not, that's not business casual. It's, there's a, there's a dress code. It was weird. It was, it was not appropriate, right? So there were some like parties at night, like, like um, work sponsored parties. Sure, wear whatever the heck you want to that. That's fine. Um, but during the day, you know, we're with these guest speakers. We're doing um, different like um, simulations of things for like work, like running through different types of conversations and stuff. Um, you know, business casual was the dress code and there were definitely some women there that were not business casual. Um, and it was just, it was a little jarring to see. Um, and I, I saw it more, like I've been to other work functions where I didn't have to like get on a plane to go to them. And that is not how people dress for those things. So um, that was the one type of outfit that I saw there. Um, the second type of outfit definitely was business casual and um, it looked beautiful. Um, but I, I had never really like seen it before sort of maybe maybe sort of a version of it in a fashion magazine. It's a very like 80s look. So I'm sure I'd seen it in like a version of it in, you know, nine to five, the movie or something. So um, the second look is, uh, so they were wearing either super duper high heels or like chunky white sneakers. I love a chunky white sneaker. Um, and then they wore a pair of pants that was like slim fitting at the waist and um, then uh, wider leg most of the time, like on the leg. And so it's pretty well tailored usually. Uh, and it's in a solid color. So khaki or gray, sometimes black, but not as often as you would think. Um, lavender, green, you know, just uh, blue, just different colors, but but a solid color, right? And then they'd wear like um, a white, it basically just looked like a knit tank top that you could get like a five pack from at Walmart, um, and then a blazer on top of it. And so sometimes the blazer, like I saw one woman, she was actually wearing, a, it was literally a suit, you could tell it was a suit, um, with an oversized, often than they were oversized, um, an oversized blazer uh, with a matching color or a contrasting color. Um, the hair most often was like my Victoria's Secret curls, like day, or uh, you know, the sock curls, I'm sorry, combine the two things, Victoria's Secret hair, uh, sock curls, um, day like two or three. Um, and then uh, a lot of them did wear, wear a good amount of makeup, which again, more power to you. Um, but, but there was one woman I remember seeing in particular, I was like, oh my gosh, how early did she get up to do that makeup look? Like that is some dedication there, my friend. Um, so again, looked beautiful. Um, and so I thought to myself, okay, uh, the things that I brought for this conference, they're not Miami things. <laughs> so wouldn't it be nice to do a video for my YouTube channel and see if I could make a Miami work look either out of the things that I have or like just buy one piece. So um, I came home and I was looking through my closet and I found one pair of pants. It was um, a very high-waisted pair of, of lavender colored pants that were wide leg. And I put them on and they're, they're not like um, I like ASOS, that's where they're from, I believe. Um, but like this, I'm not sure why I kept these. I've never worn them before. Um, and granted, like I tried them on right after I ate lunch, which might've been a mistake because they're very high waisted and I didn't have any stretch. Um, but uh, they just like, they didn't, they didn't look right. And I'm like, why, why did I get these to begin with? Because maybe I was trying to sort of broaden my horizons. I do like sort of clown pants. I call them clown pants um, in general, but uh, I like different shapes of clown pants and also um, some of them I don't wear out of the house. I, they're just, it's like house clothes. So, um, so I was like, why, why do I even have these? So I had two pair of pants that like sort of fit the bill, um, but like not quite. And then I find out that even though I have probably a, literally a hundred white blouses, like white tops, I don't have any white tank tops that I can just wear as a tank top. Um, the ones that I do have are sort of see-through and you really have to wear something over, the whole point of them is a layering piece so that I can wear another white shirt or another shirt that's like not quite opaque and you don't see like my straps or whatever underneath here. Um, that, that is something, by the way, I tend to be a little bit more conservative with the way that I dress. What is happening with my hair? I don't know. Ugh. I half dried it. I was trying this hair dryer, th one of those like paddle brush hair dryer thingies. My mom got it from Costco and she didn't like it. So she wanted to see if I liked it before I returned it. I didn't like it. It, it took 10 minutes to like barely dry my hair halfway. I'm like, oh, whatever, I don't need this. Um, anyway, uh, so yeah, so I'm trying to make this outfit and it just, it's just, it doesn't like feel like me. Um, and also these pants are annoying and like, I, I like my cardigans and I like my blouses that are patterned. I have so many beautiful pattern tops. Like that's what I usually do. It's a pattern top and um, you know, solid bottoms and uh, a cardigan or a, a blazer in a solid color. That's my standard thing for work. So then I'm thinking to myself, well, why, why was I so enchanted with this look? Is it just like, 
Is it just because it's new or like what, what's the deal? Um, and then I started to realize that, um, you know, pretty much all the women that I saw wearing these looks were like pretty young. So I'm, I'm not old, I, I guess, uh, but I'm, I'm not 22, right? Um, I have never been smaller than a size six and I was a size six for like five minutes. Um, I'm currently a size 14. And all of the women that I saw wearing this were, they couldn't have been larger than a size eight, uh, maybe a size six. And like, there's nothing wrong with that. Like you just, you, you have your body. This is your meat sack that you're using to go throughout the world. And just like, I can't help that I was, you know, born with a giant head and, and large shoulders and, you know, uh, kind of a sweet tooth. Um, those women can't help the way that they were born. You know, okay, she's six feet tall and blonde and has an Australian accent. Like, that's just who she is. That's how she was born. That's like, I'm not trying to, I'm not trying to crap on anybody, right? Um, so then it sort of got me thinking about, like, there's this blog that I've seen before, um, and it's called, uh, well, it's not, it's not what it's called, but the, the concept of it is, is this fashion or is this person just thin? Um, because the idea is like, uh, you know, if, if a, a conventionally attractive thin woman wore this outfit and then, you know, a size 18 woman who is less conventionally attractive wore the same outfit, um, you know, are people going to say that the thin woman has, is fashion? Um, and the, the fat woman is, you know, letting herself go or lazy or whatever, because it happens quite a bit. You'll see like some of the, the streetwear looks that some of these models wear. Um, if a fat woman wore it, they, no one would look twice at them. Nobody would like, if anything, they would get insults hurled at them because it happens. Like I'm a small fat, I have small fat privileges being a size 14. Um, but this happens to women all the time. Um, uh, there's a, a podcast I listen to called Maintenance Phase, which is where um, Aubrey Gordon and Michael Hobbs talk about um, health grifters and like the, the toxicity of the, the diet culture and the diet industry. I love that she calls herself a fat lady about town. And she talks about this kind of thing like just, just all the time. So I'm thinking to myself, um, you know, I don't love this outfit on myself. Is that just because it's my style and I like the style that I have? Is it some internalized fat phobia that I have? Because... Um, you know, I do get self-conscious if like, if I don't fit into things the way I did before, um, it's, it's like, I don't like that. Right. And there's nothing wrong with losing or gaining some weight. There's, there's nothing wrong with it. Um, like everybody's just trying to sort of do their best. Um, and everybody has a different definition of what's most healthy for them. Uh, especially with like the mind body connection. That's a big thing for me because, well, that's, that's a story for another day actually. Um, and so it's like, is this some internalized fat phobia here that's telling me that I can't, I can't wear this look or I don't like this look or whatever? Or is it just like, you know what, I'm, I'm thinking that I need to fit in with this group when I really don't? Or is it, you know, oh, this is just like a cool fashion thing and it was sort of like I was at this fashion show and like it was, it was almost like the room was a fashion show sometimes. Um, and I'm just intimidated by this situation because that's never going to be me. Um, I don't know. I can't, I can't quite figure out what it is. Um, I definitely think there's some internalized fat phobia there, which, which makes me sad that I still have that. But like, it's just like, you know, everybody has internalized racism. Everybody has internalized fat phobia. Everybody has internalized misogyny. And we all just kind of have to work to get rid of that every day. Um, every time these things come up, every time this is in your, in your, in your head with a thought process, um, because this is what our country was based on. Basically, if you live in the United States, anyway, this is, this is sort of how it was made and who it was made for. Um, and that's not to say like if you're a tall, thin, rich, white guy that we should just automatically hate you. Like that's not, that's not it either. <laughs> um, but um, yeah, it kind of ties into the whole privilege thing. Um, and so, you know, I, I toyed around with the idea of like getting a pair of pants in this shape from Amazon that are in khaki because I hate khakis. Not, nothing against the color khaki or people who like khakis. It's just, I've just always hated it. I don't know why. I don't like it. I don't own anything, any khaki bottoms. I don't think I own any khaki tops either. Um, and so it's like, well, what if I pick these two things that like, you know, one of the, the shape is hard to tailor for me and the, and the color I hate. And what if I try to style it like I'm in Miami and it's like, well, what's, what am I, what am I really doing? Like, why can't I just be myself? Um, so that's sort of the reason for this no makeup hair thing is because it's like, you know what? I'm just going to be myself on camera to, as, uh, to, to reinforce this concept of like, like your, your meat sack shouldn't matter so much. And it's great to like, you know, I have a million piercings in my ears and you know, you want to color your, I color my hair, you want to color your hair and you want to get tattoos and like, you want to adorn your body. You want to wear these beautiful clothes. Like that's, 
That's awesome. Just do whatever you want to do. Um, I, I, and it's not like anybody sort of did this to me. It's not like anybody said, oh, you don't look like you're in fashion or like, it's not like anyone was comparing me to these women. I was doing it to myself. Um, so that's, that's an internal problem that I kind of have to address. Um, so yeah, so I just, um, I just kind of wanted to get this out on, on video to see if it might sort of help somebody else. Um, there's this, this, um, saying called comparison is the thief of joy. And so, uh, and also I think I've mentioned, I teach music lessons after work and, and people are always like, well, I'm not as good as so-and-so and I'll never be able to sing like this person. And blah. No, you have to like, if you want to make progress in something, just compare yourself to yourself. You don't need to compare yourself to anybody else. And if you don't want to make progress in a thing, that's mostly okay too. <laughs> like, like there's so much, um, emphasis put on like, well, you always have to have the next thing. You always have to be a little bit smaller here, a little bit bigger here, a little bit smarter, a little bit faster, a little bit, like a lot of those things really don't matter. Um, like the things that you want to work on and you want to be great at, like if you want to be the best person at your career that there ever was, then awesome, go do that. Um, if you want to be like, you know, do some kind of bodybuilding thing, like go do that. If you want to be on a world stage because you know you, you're the best opera singer that ever lived, go try to do that, right? So, um, where was I going with this? I'm going somewhere with this. I don't. I my train of thought has exploded in the station. Um, but the point is, uh, I love you, and and you should love you as much as you can, you know, for for your situation in in life and and for being a human being, right? We're all cucumbers with anxiety. Um, uh, and, and if you can't love yourself, then I think actually what's, what's better is body neutrality to say like, this is my meat sack. This is what's taking me around the earth. This is what's, what's hosting whatever consciousness is and, and letting me do the things that I want to do. Um, and I realize I do have some privilege, you know, on that level as well. Cause it's like, you know, I, I have some Eurocentric facial features, I guess. And like, I have decent hair and like, I can fit into some stereotypical Western beauty standards when I try. So I realize I'm coming from a place of privilege, um, but, but I really hope everybody, um, you know, has some, has some body neutrality today or some, some self love today. Uh, if anybody wants to share their stories or their thoughts or feedback or whatever, um, put it of course in the comments uh, below. And other than that, I hope you have a super awesome rest of your day. Thanks so much for tuning in. Bye.